if you did that. Now, the second thing I'm going to recommend you do is this. Um, once you've taken stock of your wants, we move to your needs. And under your needs, I'm going to talk about your basic, basic necessities. For example, let's say you um, spend £100 every month on feeding. Uh, I'm not too worried about what you spend the money on. What I'd like you to do is just become aware of, of um, maybe the, the items that those, that money is allocated to. So, for example, you might find, I'll use myself as a good example. Let's say I spend £100 every month. But it could be that maybe there are two or three items that I spend 60% of that £100 on. The rest could be just, um, you know, canned tomatoes and, and some, some, um, some rice, some pasta. It doesn't matter. It could be that 60% of that are, could be allocated to three or four main items. For those main items, one of the things you want to look at and check and see is if those items can be bought in bulk. Usually in most supermarkets, they usually have discounts. They might say buy one, get one half price, or buy one, get one off. So for example, if you find those items, I'll give you a good example. Toothpaste. You all need it. We all need it. We all use it. You can buy a toothpaste in bulk. You don't have to buy a toothpaste every single month. You can simply wait when they have a discount if it's 50% off. You buy a, your toothpaste for the whole year. But buying it for the whole year, but because you bought it at 50% off, you've saved 50% of what you would have spent. You might find that if you trace that amount to that 8% that I used initially, which was my, uh, in this case, using that 8%, if that was my cost, my inflation cost increase on just um, my um, food items and my general shopping, it could be that that 12 months savings that I've just gained from buying in bulk, that could represent 0. who knows, 0.5%. So suddenly that 8%, which should have been my inflation rate increase, drops to 7.5%. Now, if you apply the same principle to how you spend your money, to the products and the services you spend money on, one of the things you find very quickly is that it becomes very easy for you actually to beat inflation because it means that you take from one aspect intelligently and it helps you reduce the overall cost increase um, of the goods that you spend money on. Uh, another one is simply if you go through your utilities. Every year, we make the mistake of not renegotiating our contract. So we keep paying the same amount. So in my case, I picked up the phone and I said to the utility supplier, well, if you don't <laughs> reduce um, what I'm paying, I'm going to move to a supplier. I'm going to change and move to your competitor. And for most companies, just so you know, the cost of securing and getting a new customer is usually much higher than the discount that they would award to you if you wanted to leave. So usually for most companies, it's in their best interest to keep you. That might mean they give you a discount of 10% or 12%. By doing that, you get a discount. It means that there is no increase to what you're paying. As a matter of fact, maybe there's a decrease. And therefore, although the inflation is changing, is getting bigger, you're not paying any more. So I'll simply say, in summary, four things. Number one, if you can, invest. If you choose to save, if you can, spend some time and do some detailed analysis and find out the best savings, um, you know, interest rates and companies and what they're offering. But spend some time and read the small prints because they can be very deceptive. Number three, I would say just do an inventory on your lifestyle. Do an inventory on how you spend money, what you spend money on. Um, if you remember that inflation is by gravity to your wealth creation, then one of the things you can realize is actually if you change your lifestyle, you can change your life. Now, I'm not saying change and stop what you're doing, although that would be nice if it helps you and if that's what you want. What I'd like you to do is just become more aware. Just raise your awareness. Become more aware of what you're spending money on. And more importantly, stop leaving money on the table. I, I was born... And I, I grew up um, in local markets, and around local markets. And when we bought our food, we would go to local markets. And therefore, um, you needed to know how to negotiate. I love negotiating. I love markets because I'll go to a market. I can ask how much is it selling for. Um, the seller might say it's four pounds. I might say, well, would you accept three pounds twenty? I show him the money. He says no. I say, what? Well, what would be your best price? 
He says it's four pounds. I said, okay, thank you. I'm moving elsewhere. In some cases, as you're trying to walk away, he's seen the money in your hand. He has inventories. He knows, listen, if I don't sell this, I have to take it back. I'm storing this. The cost of storage um, is high. I need to get my money back. He might call you back and say, would you give me 350? Now, if you gave him 350, then you just say 50p out of four pounds, which is what you would have you would have paid if you had just walked to him and given him four pounds. Now, what is 50p saving in four pounds? Now, think about it. That's one eighth. So you just say 12.5%. Now, that is simply the art of negotiation. All I'm simply saying is in your lifestyle choices and how you live, bring that same attitude. Now, I know for many people, most people don't like the idea of negotiating and haggling, but you don't have to do it this in most supermarkets. Most supermarkets have done that for you already. They regularly will have products that they say, listen, we're gonna give you this for half price. We're gonna give you this for 25% off. You just have to be more aware. And when that offer comes on, ask yourself a simple question. Is this something I buy regularly? If the answer is yes, calculate how much you would spend normally for the whole year. For example, it could be canned food, it could be toothpaste, it could be uh, maybe your shower gel. It could be things you use every month. Uh, th there are specific items that we spend money on every month that we need. If it falls into any of such items, you simply buy in bulk. You buy in bulk, you save a good saving. That, that way you don't have to keep spending. Because every single month, some of these retailers increase the cost of their goods. Or what they do is they do what we call debasing, meaning they reduce. They keep the prices fixed but they start reducing very slightly the total quantity. So you might come to a shop and you find actually you've been paying 10 pounds for 100 grams of biscuits. It's come the next month, it's 10 pounds, but now it's no longer 100 grams, it's 95 grams. So they're debasing the products you're buying. It's the same thing. They're charging you more for unit price. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about, which I didn't mention, which you might find, some of you might actually find it to be um, you know, common sense, is this. Um, some of you might think I don't like this uh, recommendation, but I'll share it anyway. In addition to reducing your consumption, if you can, or buying in bulk, if you can, there are specific items that you buy that you should buy the luxury items. You should buy spend more. I'll use a good example. You walk into a shop, and you want to buy a pair of shoes. The pair of shoes is 200 pounds. You buy the pair of shoes, it's affordable. You wear it for two months, then you have to replace it. If you were the kind of person who wears the shoes every day, maybe you wear it for two, three months, then you have to replace it. So you have to buy another one. You wear it for three months, then you have to replace it. Well, let's assume perhaps you only buy two pair of shoes in a year. It costs you 200 pounds for the first and 200 pounds for the second. You spend 400 pounds. The next year you have to buy another two. You can decide instead to upgrade and spend your money on luxury items. You simply say this, I'm gonna buy the best pair of shoes. You can walk into a shop and say, I want the best pair of shoes. And they say, how much is it? You say, they say it's 450. But the difference between the one you bought previously and this is that this will last you for four years. And when the soles of the shoes start to go off, you can just simply resole it. Over the four-year period, maybe it would cost you, including resoling, maybe you resold twice, maybe it costs you 550 pounds, 600 pounds for that four-year period. Whereas if you were buying shoes every two, twice every, every 12 months, then in that four-year period, you bought eight pairs of shoes. Now think about that. Simply means in that four-year period, you spent 400 pounds every single year. That's 1,600. But by buying a more expensive pair of shoes, you spend 550, 600 pounds. So the net saving in this case is a thousand pounds over a four year period. The same principle applies uh, in other areas. For example, I think if you're gonna buy maybe a jacket, you're gonna go buy a pair of suits, buy good quality. Don't buy cheap quality. If you're gonna buy just you know vests, if you're gonna buy uh, things that you wear around maybe to the gym, um, you can make subtle changes. If you're um, active in terms of maybe sports or active in terms of uh, uh, some form of exercise, buy the best, don't buy cheap, buy the best because you're gonna use it every single day or every single week. You wanna buy the best because by buying the best, it lasts much longer. So the point I'm making is this, I'm, I'm 
giving you a counterintuitive recommendation, recommendation, which is for you to spend more on specific items, your shoes, your belt, your wristwatch, perhaps your sunglasses, but items that you need. I would put sunglasses in perhaps um, in a desired category. Shoes, that's important. Belt, that's important. Your jacket, that's important. A bag, that's important. These are items that you're going to use almost every day. And for that reason, um, you're going to have high wear and tear. And in most of the cases that I've seen, including mine, buying quality is cheaper in the long run. In the short run, when you're paying for it, it looks expensive. But in the long run, it's much cheaper over a period of time. So my recommendations were invest. If you're going to save, save, and if you must save, do it intelligently. Next, just take an inventory of your lifestyle. Make some changes. Um, buy in bulk if you can and when you can. And for your the key items that you spend money on, I'll recommend, if you can, buy expensive, buy quality. By buying quality, you decrease the total amount you spend over a long period of time. Now, I hope that's been useful. Um, let me know what you think. Remember what I said at the start? I said, these are ideas that I'm applying and I have applied in my life. And it may not be for you. And there's nothing to be ashamed of in saying, I don't think this might apply or this might work for me. What I'd like you to do is just um, think about it. Hopefully I've planted in your, in your mind and in your thoughts uh, a seed. Uh, that idea that might perhaps encourage you to just um, stop and think about how inflation is holding you back from creating wealth.